All right, welcome to Static Six video uh, for Necrons. In this episode, uh, we're going to take a look at the Triarch Batorians. It's one of the brand new units that I've painted up. I've really enjoyed painting them. They're actually quite quick to paint using the technique that I have. And uh, it's one of the elite units, one of, one of the elite and unique units really for the Necrons. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a good theme going with these. We'll talk about the unit, uh, what options you can go for with them. Uh, it was a difficult choice, we'll cover that in the video. And also we'll zoom in and take a look at these models how they've come out. So we'll bring the unit in. Now I've gone for an expensive unit of 10. You don't have to go for 10. But that's the unit size that I've gone for. That configuration there of 10 of those is 320 points. So they're an expensive unit. But uh, there's a reason why I've gone for that side at that size. Uh, which is very important, but what I'll do here, I'm going to zoom in first of all, we'll take a closer look at these models. So there they are. Like the void blades here, pretty cool. These things here, love the spot green colour. Necrons look just as good, the green looks great. Uh, red, orange, blue, all look good as well. I've seen Necrons painted up in, in those different spot colours and you can see the bronze I've introduced into the model as well. So if you like the way these Necrons look and you want to achieve the same results, this whole weathered kind of feel to them here and show you how to paint all the green and so on, then uh, on the channel here there is the full painting tutorial for the Necrons. Uh, so from start to finish I'll show you how to paint uh, Necrons up in that video and you just can apply that technique to all of the models uh, within the Necron range, no problem. There's another one. Look cool. They're quite big models. You know, they stand uh, sort of. They'd be taller than a regular space room for sure. So they are big. So a couple more here. You can go for multiple different poses. It's a beautiful kit. And yeah, we'll do this one. Here. There. So that's those. We'll uh, zoom out now and take a look at the rules. Just mentioned, uh, check out the Plus channel. You'll see the revamped Necron list uh, on there that's been proposed. You can leave your own comments and feedback on that and help uh, shape and change the way that army actually turns out. There's plenty of exclusive battle reports of the Necrons already on the Plus channel as well. Ones for 8th edition uh, and then I'm putting, well there are already ones for the new codex on there as well. So if you want to see some Necron action, then uh, check out the Plus channel. So, these come under elites. They don't jump infantry, but they're not in the fast section. They're actually elite. They are expensive, as I said. With this configuration here, they're 320 points uh, for a unit of 10. So 32 points a model. So, as I've mentioned before, the theme uh, for the Necrons, it's fluffy. It fits the way the Necrons are meant to be in the game. And that's durability. That's the key word uh, for the Necrons. This may not be the most powerful uh, shock unit that's out there. There's other units in 40k that you can get 320 points that do way more damage But the key with these is, is not The initial impact. It's the durability of the unit. And I've seen that illustration in a couple of recent games that we've played When these guys endure to the end They become just more and more powerful as the opponents casualties are beginning to mount up These guys are busy repairing themselves and actually growing in size So uh, it's a unit that I've, I've gone for a bigger size and you'll see it with multiple units I'm taking for the Necrons. The whole idea of taking the big units is the ability to absorb damage, this whole durability idea. If you take a unit of five, your opponent's much more likely to try and destroy those in one turn of shooting than ten. Uh, and if the opponent gets the wipeout, you're not able to reanimate them. These come with reanimation protocols. So beginning of your turn on a five plus, or if there's a crypt set there by four plus, Models will start getting back up. If you've lost two models and these return to play, that's 64 points back on the table. It's incredible. It's such a powerful thing for the Necrons. But if you have small units and the opponent knows you have reanimation protocols, they'll make it much more easy for them to focus on small units, wiping them out, and then deny new reanimation protocols. So I just go for a full unit of 10, which is the max size for these. It's more expensive, but if they're surviving and not being wiped out and reanimating, points uh, they help 
pay for themselves that way. So I take these as my general all-rounders. I'll happily charge them into pretty much anything, especially get especially good against uh, medium to heavily, medium to heavy armored troops. Ideally, without an one save. So tactical marines. These guys have them for breakfast, no problem. Uh, Tau fire warriors, cut them down, no, <laughs> no problem at all. So your general medium armored infantry. These guys are great. The vehicles, they'll cause wounds, they'll cut through and they'll cause wounds. Uh, good for surrounding characters. Again, the lower the invon save, the better. Uh, but good for surrounding characters, causing wounds. And then for light infantry and hordes, they'll happily get stuck in and chew their way through. No problem at all. Now, they're also handy against flyers. Because these guys can fly. Which means they're able to engage flyers in close combat. Uh, the other thing about vehicles is they, they fight at strength 5, so the vast majority of vehicles out there, pretty much all of them, even Bane Blade, these guys are in 5s to wound. It's, that strength 5 is, is really helpful if you're going to try and take on vehicles in close combat. Strength 4 is 6s. Against Liam Russ, 6s. But strength 5, which means 5 plus, which is helpful. Movement 10. So I, I usually pair these up with a Katakun Command Barge and it's this whole Egyptian theme. You know, ancient Egyptian times, uh, sort of, you know, biblical times, you'd have the chariot and then you'd have the chariot runners and they were men on foot that ran with the chariot. They were like sort of really fit guys uh, that would run alongside. There's like a bodyguard. You see it like a, uh, a presidential car that goes around. You have bodyguards actually outside the car on foot following it along, uh, acting as a bodyguard on the lookout. That's the theme I want to do with these. So Triarch Praetorians uh, move 10, he moves 12, so they can kind of keep up with each other. Uh, they protect him. He's uh, eight wounds character, so the opponent's got to try and chomp their way through here. His close combat's okay, but with these guys around, you've got yeah, that's a, a lot of nasty close combat ability just there. Then he then benefits them. He grants them wave of commands. So they're on plus one to the hit rolls, plus one on the charge, plus one to the advance rolls as well. So, all right, that's I love that combination. I just think it looks so cool as well. So, uh, movement ten, weapon skill, ballistic skill three plus, strength five, which is really good. Toughness five, which is excellent. So now toughness five, all your bolters are needing. Fives to wound. So that's their durability. They do have two wounds as well. So again, adding to their durability. Two attacks as standard, which is okay. And then that gets better. Uh, leadership 10 and a 3 plus save. So yes, they will get cut down by heavy weapons. You have plasma weapons and so on are going to start taking them out. But during a game, if you're taking, if I'm keeping them out of trouble and I'm taking casualties like this, it's no panic. If that was unit 5, we would be panicking. But because it's the bigger unit, you got a good chance of just reanimating. And then towards the end of the game, when your opponent doesn't have much stuff left, if this is still a decent enough size, or even if it's just like five of them left, and you're reanimating, they're just going to get more and more powerful, and your opponent's just not going to have the resources to deal with them. And then that's when they reach the ultimate point of their power. With that combination, I usually run one of these as well. Uh, the Flying Crypt Tech. He'll keep up, granting plus one to the animation protocols. So plus one is uh, four plus to reanimate. If he's kind of resurrection orb, and you get into reanimate again, uh, you can restore these back to virtually full strength very, very quickly. Uh, one of the dangers of larger units is the morale system that works. You know, if you take nine casualties, that's going to be nine added to your morale on your roll on D6, very unlikely to get wiped out. But these guys uh, have a purpose unshakable, it's auto pass for morale. So you can have your full size unit and just ignore the damage that comes through. So it's perfect uh, for them to take. So I spent ages trying to choose which combination to go for. It's a difficult choice. And I guess uh, visually the Rod of Covenant looks better. I think it looks much more impact to it. It's visually there's a lot more to it. Uh, this this uh, big Rod of Covenant sticking out. Um, I went for the Void Blades in the end. Uh, we'll cover the Rod of Covenant first of all. It's a shooting weapon, so uh, range 12, assault 1, so you can jump 
and assault and still shoot with these at strength 5 minus 3. That'll cause trouble again for break, breaking up and hacking down uh, medium to heavy infantry. You do get to use it in close combat, which is strength, use 8 minus 3 and 1 damage. Uh, with 2 attacks, you know, it's 20 attacks. Uh, I just went for the Void Blade in the end, uh, which is 8 minus 3, it's the same as the Rod of Covenant, but you get an extra attack. I just saw the value in the extra attacks. So now these guys have three attacks each. That's 30 attacks for this unit. I just saw the value of taking the attacks in close combat. You still get your shooting weapon because they take particle casters, which is range 12, strength, uh, pistol one, strength six, AP zero, one damage. You hardly ever do any damage of those. Uh, I've not caused much damage at all unless it's like hordes. But it's just slightly, you get slightly more with the void blade and particle caster option. Let's just check here. What I'll do is just check. Particle caster. You have to pay four points to the particle caster. The void blade is six. So, uh, looking at ten points for the upgrades uh, for that option. Try out Praetorians. Yeah, they're 22. So that's your 32 points. Um... So, Rod of Covenant's 10. So there's no difference in points cost. It's just a choice you can make. I couldn't really go down the route magnetizing. I just had to make a choice and glue them up that way. I spent ages trying to choose. I went for the Void Blades in the end. I just think they look great. Uh, the Rod of Covenant, so they look excellent as well. So it's entirely your choice what to go for. Either or, they're roughly the same. I just saw a slight advantage in taking the extra attack. But the Rod of Covenant can make that up with the, uh, the more effective shooting. So, uh, Enhancements, Wave of Command, that comes from the Catacomb Command Barge, uh, that's a good one. Uh, keeping a Crypt Tech of some kind nearby to enhance the Renation Protocols is good. Don't use them recklessly. You throw them out in your front line, the opponent will just blow them away knowing for a while there's no one save uh, and take them out. But if you sort of, I sort of let my Necron Warriors take the brunt of the firepower. They're bigger units that can absorb the damage. They're the ones that take the heavy hits. Sort of keep these on a flank or keep them at the back out of trouble and then introduce them later on usually as a tactic. can always do it but it's a tactic that usually pays off. It's paid off in the past so the last thing I want to do is get these guys destroyed early on in the game. There's a big chunk of your army gone and if they're wiped out you can't reanimate. Uh, other enhancements then for them. There is some stratagems but I just would sort of Use uh, it's um, judgment of truck. Yeah, it's here. One command point. Use strategy before a unit truck Praetorians in your army shoots in the shooting phase or fights in the fight phase. Add one to the hit rolls. So if you haven't used the wave command on there, it's not available for some reason or out of range. You can still get your plus one to the hit rolls, and that's good. You know, going to close combat and twos to hit means that those thirty attacks are going to be more. Uh, effective. I'm going to roll up some dice here, just to illustrate, I don't have the space three models, but pretend we've got a ten man squad of tactical marines. So for that I would get a full ten man squad, we'll not do the shooting, but just to give you an idea of what they can do. Yeah, you know, 30 attacks, that's a lot of dice. Uh, even five of them, you know, have been cut down by half, still 15 attacks, you know, power weapons, it's still really good. But you see your opponent's reaction when they say, oh, how many attacks have you got? And you're like, oh, 30. That's strength 5 minus 3. <laughs> Freeze for hits. It's a good roll. Remember, we're going after tactical marines here. Twos for hits there would have just given me an extra couple of hits. So it's okay, but freeze is pretty solid. Strength 5, toughness 4. It really helps. It gives you, it's just a straight for you here. If I was on 4s, that would be my wounds, but because I'm on a terrible roll actually, but here, all of those extra wounds have come through, being at strength five. So that's really good. Six is to try and cut these, uh, to save these Marines and save one. Almost wiped out, that's a 10 man tactical soldier, but 10 man tactical soldier virtually killed him. So I'll go again, it wasn't a particularly good result that. But you're virtually looking at a wipeout. I 
advantage. I just saw the advantage there. Uh, again, look at that. That's, that's a lot of ones. Just saw the advantage of, of all the extra attacks. I think the Marines are in trouble again. Any target's going to be in trouble here. Sixes. Good. My number of blocks come through. Six save. That was quite an exception there. But uh, again, that tactical squad in major trouble. Three to wounds. I've got a feeling this one's going to be better. That was still a wound there, I think. Yeah, six is to save this. All of a sudden, there's trouble. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. 17 dead marines. So, it gives you an idea. And then the opponent fights back, they might cause a couple of wounds, but it's not going to be enough. They're going to have to take a lot, you know, make a lot of effort. And if you're sly with these and clever with them and, and don't expose them to too much firepower. So, do not put them in the middle of your army and then charge them in on a headlong charge. They will get destroyed. The key is to keep them alive and be patient with them. I had it. But the opponent needs to fight with something. You can't just hide everything. So you, you, I put out units of, of Necron fire war, of Necron warriors usually, big blobs of 15. And the opponent fires at them. And it's got a lot of effort to try and get through them. Uh, one enhancement actually is your Cryptac with the Chronometron. He will grant them a 5 plus invon save. So you can introduce an invon save uh, just through this little guy here. But uh, 5 plus invon save is really helpful. So, because uh, often the opponent's going to use heavy firepower to try and bring those down. So, you know, when you deploy uh, and you're not going to commit early on, but the opponent may be able to get some shots off at them, set them up near him. That's what I'm, I try and do that sometimes. And then I'll grant them a 5 plus invon save. But uh, because of their size, they're difficult to get rid of, or if, if they are destroyed, it takes a lot of effort. Um, so I think that a nasty enough unit. So that is, that's the tactic of the Triarch Praetorians. Uh, I really like the way they've, they've come out. I love, love the white helmets on them as well. Just sort of an elite uh, Necron unit. Uh, very unique, really. You know, sort of jump infantry, but sort of super tough jump infantry. All of them armed with these power swords. Uh, I think they're a really good unit. They're not necessarily the best arms. It's not thunder hammers in there and so on. But you know, they'll grind away, they'll cause trouble for most targets, and if you can just keep them alive, keep reanimating them, they're a unit that can become extremely powerful towards the end of the game. And what are you trying to do at the end of the game? Trying to wipe units out, you know, mop units up and trying to grab objectives, you've got a unit that's able to jump ten inches. So the speed of them is very effective as well. And they can charge anything, even units that can fly. So I'd be a big fan of my Triarch Praetorians. Yes, they're expensive. Uh, but the key is to make them nice and durable and use and time them just right in games and they can be deadly. Check out the uh, comment section below. Other experienced Necron players encourage you to leave your feedback. Ways that you use these. Maybe you don't use them in units of 10. Perhaps a different size. Uh, different combinations, tactics, stratagems. How you use them in your army. What they're aimed and, and so on. Is then uh, leave that in the comment section below. And we can learn from others' experience as well. And if you rate them, maybe you don't even rate these at all and you you replace them with other units that are more effective. But whatever comments you want to leave and tactics, then uh, leave that in the comments section below. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to see more Necron action in our battle reports, uh, then check out the Plus channel. Plenty of Necron uh, battles over there. But there it is. That's the uh, tactica for uh, Triarch Praetorians. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.